You know, one of my favorite parts about covering old games is that I have a reason to replay games that I haven't touched in years. One of them is columns on the Sega Mega Drive, which I vaguely remember as that puzzle game with the gems and the weird old paintings and the music that makes me feel like I'm back on Saturday morning church. But sometimes even spur of the moment projects like this one end up ballooning far beyond what I imagined. I knew that columns had a port on the Game Gear, but I didn't know that it was originally made for an old PC operating system, was then sold to Sega, got ported to a billion other systems, and also had a remake on the PlayStation 2. And I'm probably still missing something. The original Columns was created by Che Geertsen. It was released in 1989 for the HP UX, Hewlett Packard's old Unix-based operating system. Information and images are really hard to find, but apparently it was ported to other systems as well. Regardless, the rights were sold to Sega in 1990. They then went on to update the game with new graphics and music and to slap it on the arcades. Ports to the Mega Drive and Game Gear would soon follow, serving as a pack-in game in certain bundles. In fact, I got my copy of the game on a six-game compilation that came with my Mega Drive. It was a pretty sweet deal, even if I didn't give a single toss about... whatever this is. Too bad I had terrible luck with controllers for that thing. The console came with a thick three-button controller that stopped responding properly after a couple of years, and the six-button controller that I got as a replacement didn't last even half of that. Pretty sure it wasn't official anyway, just some cheap piece of chunk. And even if it wasn't chunk at first, it sure became chunk after I opened its corpse in a desperate attempt to Frankenstein it back to life. <sighs> now those were good times. Oh right, uh, columns. Sega's fancy new puzzle games sure went around. It was seen on multiple consoles, on multiple Japanese computers, and even got very late ports to Nintendo, Super Famicom and Game Boy- Wait, what the f- Columns was relatively successful, even if not quite as much as Tetris. In a way, it was seen as Sega's answer to Tetris, the rights to which were... sort of held by Nintendo back then. And boy, did they score big with that. But that doesn't mean that Columns is just a poor man's Tetris. So maybe it's time to actually start talking about the game itself rather than just mentioning details that anyone can easily find on Wikipedia. I won't be covering every single version of Columns because... seriously. But we'll start with the arcade version since it was the basis for many versions that followed. It has a single, very simple mode. First you pick easy, normal or hard difficulty, which starts you at a different level. Obviously, the higher the level, the harder it gets as the pieces drop down faster and faster. The game then starts. At its core, Columns is a tile-matching game where the objective is just to get as high of a score as possible. Just get higher and higher. There are six types of gems that will explode when you link three or more of them together. It can be horizontally, vertically or even diagonally. The playfield is made of six lanes in total, and the pieces drop down from the top of the screen in packs of three. You can rotate the gems while they fall, but after reaching a surface there is also a mercy period that lets you rotate them until they get locked in place. Whoever replacing your champs on the field can lead to chain reactions, clearing multiple groups of champs in one go and scoring some major points. Sometimes you also get a magic jewel, which is this glowy thing that erases all champs of the same type it touches. And that's it really. Columns follows the rule of keeping it simple and easy to pick up and play, but also of keeping it addicting. Makes sense, given that this is an arcade game we are talking about. The idea was to eat as much of your money as possible. And it's probably because of this same reason that this particular version of Columns is by far the hardest of all the ones I will be covering. Level 1 is gentle enough and doesn't need any lube, but once you get past that the difficulty spikes like a hedgehog and the game throws you off the deep end. Champs speed up significantly after level 2 to a frankly ridiculous degree and it won't take long until you have the Tower of Babel on your hands. There is only so much getting good that you can do before getting all hot and frustrated, and probably jumping over to the Outrun cabinet instead. Still, the music is pretty alright if a bit weird, I don't know. 
The champs sure make a satisfying sound when you plop them down though. Bah. The graphics are basic, but given the kind of game that it is, it they serve their purpose. They are clean and the champs are easily recognizable. It's obvious that I'm struggling to find things to say about the arcade version, so let's just move on to the Mega Drive port, the one that I remember. The visuals and sound are practically identical and the arcade mode is pretty much exactly that. Well, actually it's quite a bit easier on the first few levels, but it still escalates to big brain boy material. It's just that it has a difficulty curve instead of a difficulty cliff. In the options menu, you can pick a separate difficulty setting for the arcade mode, which changes... I don't know what it changes. You can also configure the controls here or listen to the music and sound effects. On the main menu, you can also pick menu, which leads you to a menu. It's from here that you access the new gameplay modes and options. First is original mode, a modified version of the arcade mode. And by modified I mean that it's the exact same thing except there are no magic jewels and you get a couple of settings to choose from. The class option alters how many types of gems show up, making a very noticeable difference in difficulty. Novice only has 4, Amateur has 5 and Pro has all 6. You can also adjust the starting level, whether to make it a 3 minute time trial and a choice of 3 music tracks. The other mode is called Flash Columns, a standard inclusion on future releases. This new mode starts with a bunch of gems already on the field, and a flashing gem at the bottom. The objective is to clear this special gem as fast as possible. The mechanics are the exact same besides that. While this is a cool addition, from a pure scoring perspective this mode doesn't seem to have been thought all the way through, since the champs that appear seem to be selected at complete random. One round you'll be clearing it in no time, next round you might struggle to draw the champs you need. I mean, most people probably don't care about points that much, but it is the... point of the game. In case you have friends, both modes can also be enjoyed in two-player or doubles mode. Two-player mode is... well, it has two players. It's not a direct confrontation or anything, both players simply try to do better than the other. Interestingly, class and level can be set separately for each player. Doubles mode is different because it's played in a single field, but both players take turns in placing gems. If something like Mario Kart doesn't do the trick, I'm sure this mode will end your friendships quite effectively. But regardless, the Mega Drive port of Columns stands on its own as a solid conversion to home consoles by being a faithful adaptation that also adds a few extras of its own. But hold on to your flashing butts, because with Barry started and the best is yet to come. Let's grind some gears with the Game Gear port, which compacts the game into a delicious 8-bit pie. They certainly won't be impressing anyone today, but the graphics and music are both very competent. You even get to pick the champ design from a small selection, though I guess that they won't be champs anymore. Only thing that bothers me is that some of the sprites look a bit messy and, I don't know, not clear enough to instantly see where HP sends and begins, I guess. Like, the fruits in particular can mesh together a bit. Either way, this version doesn't port the arcade mode, instead featuring the nearly identical original mode. Much of the new content seen in the Mega Drive release has also been ported over. You have the champ type selection, the flash mode, the versus mode... Really, in terms of content, this version does just fine as a portable release of columns. The balancing, however, is noticeably different. Like the Mega Drive version, the difficulty level eventually matches that of the butt-quenching original, but the early game is considerably easier than in both of those other versions. Besides that, the same criticism I had of Flash Columns continues to exist, but I mean seriously, that's such an insignificant thing to nitpick. Again, the Game Gear port does its job of putting columns on the palm of your hands. Yeah, it cuts a few things, but sacrifices had to be made for columns to exist on the Game Gear. Might as well mention the Master System port too, which uses some of the same assets as the Game Gear version. The most interesting part is the animated backgrounds, which admittedly do look pretty cool. Aside from that, it's still mostly the same game, aside from also including a separate two-player mode instead of just versus. 
Meanwhile, the PC Engine port isn't particularly exciting at this point. It's pretty much a scaled-down port of the Mega Drive version, but it does add two new multiplayer modes, Stone and Freeze. Unfortunately, these modes can't even be started without two players, so I don't have any experience with them. Information is also strangely hard to find, so I can't even tell you anything while pretending to know what I'm talking about. Oh well. Next up is a pretty interesting version, the Super Famicom port. Yes, a Sega game on a Nintendo console from back when console wars involved arbitrary bit counts rather than the latest and greatest AAA titles. I don't get it either. This version of Columns was released exclusively on Nintendo's rewritable card system, called Nintendo Power. No, it has nothing to do with the magazine. Much like the rewritable discs created for the original Famicom, these special cards allowed users to connect them to distribution machines that would copy the game to the card, letting it function just like a regular one. This system wasn't exactly successful, but it is an interesting footnote on the history of retro consoles. And boy oh boy, it also happens to be a very interesting footnote in Colmes' history. This version was developed by a company named Marigou, which was owned in part by Nintendo and in part by a human resources company named Recruit, which still exists to this day. Rather than being published by Sega in themselves, that responsibility fell on Media Factory. It was also released very late into the system's life, in August of 1999. Seriously, by that point the Dreamcast had already been released nearly one year before, and the PlayStation 2 would come a year later. Mystery aside, this version of Columns has actually become my favorite. Not only does it have entirely new assets and various settings to customize, it also has some excellent new music and that's a versus mode that pits two players against each other. Honestly, I'm not sure this is even 100% appropriate for this video since it might as well be an entirely new entry in the Columns series rather than just a port of the classic. According to some sources online, it was even supposed to be called Super Columns at one point. But either way, Columns, on Sega's competition, includes the usual arcade mode, multiplayer and a bunch of customization options. Nothing particularly new and exciting so far, but it is a good choice if you're just looking to smash some jewelry. However, it is missing the new modes from the PC Engine version, which... who cares? And Flash Columns and Time Attack modes, which... Okay, I don't particularly care for them, but it is a shame that they aren't included. From a purely aesthetic standpoint, this version is probably my favorite too. It's not gonna make you trip some balls like Tetris Effect, but it does have a fairly unique atmosphere compared to most puzzle games of its kind. Usually, you would get some upbeat music, but this version's new music goes the other side. It's beautiful, but also rather sad and gloomy. It's almost as if you're an explorer trying to solve the mysteries and puzzles of a long-lost civilization that got destroyed in some cataclysm. Or something, I don't know. I'm just trying to say that the music is pretty good and that it wouldn't feel out of place in a game like Chrono Trigger. In opposition to that, however, the new Versus mode does have some upbeat music to it. Actually, the entire atmosphere of the Versus mode does a 180. You have a set of six characters with silly faces and reactions, and the whole thing just oozes fun. Until you get destroyed by the AI. Which, unlike the PC Engine version's new modes, is an option, so kudos for that. The gameplay in here isn't too far off from versus modes in other similar games. You do the same thing you do in regular mode, but doing so builds up a bar that rocks your opponent's socks off once it fills up. Literally. These rocks eventually clear up, but until then you just have to deal with it. It's an endurance match, and whoever lets their stack reach the top is branded the loser. And that's about it for the Super Famicom iteration. All in all, it's a very competent version of Columns that keeps the original gameplay while adding a bit of its own flavor, and is generally better off for it. If for some contrived reason you could only play one version of Columns, then this is the one I'd recommend. You could say that it's the... Crown Jewel. Now it's time for the other oddball. 
Columns GB tells awesome characters. You might have heard the man's name before, but if you haven't, let's just say that he's certainly been around the block. Osamu Tezuka is one of the defining names of Japan's current-day manga industry and has been since over half a decade ago. People call him the father of manga, and many of his works, such as Astro Boy, have inspired countless other authors. Unfortunately, he also died from stomach cancer 30 years ago, leaving his last work, Phoenix, unfinished. Like the name implies, Columns GB features some of Tezuka's characters, such as Astro Boy from Astro Boy and Black Jack from Black Jack. Besides that, it's... Columns. On the Game Boy. You have your standard arcade mode, a difficulty setting and different jam designs. It functions pretty much the exact same as classic Columns, but you might have noticed that this version has 7 lanes instead of 6. You also get to pick from six different characters, though it's an entirely aesthetic choice. They have a few different expressions, which is a small but still appreciated thing. Unfortunately, this version has a couple of annoyances. The first one is that pressing down on the D-pad speeds up the chances fall, but it's really sensitive in this version and borderline unusable when the field is getting covered in chams. The music in Columns GB is also new, and it's not very good, and it gets grating rather quickly. But then again, I do love all things Game Boy, aside from the obnoxiously hard to see screen on real hardware anyway, so this version is still interesting in its own way. And not just because it's a friggin' Sega game on a friggin' Nintendo system. See, Columns GB has one trick up its sleeve. Puzzle Mode. Instead of being a simple endless game, Puzzle Mode gives you... Puzzles. You are given a set number of gem drops that have to be placed in the right place in the right order. It makes you stop and think for a bit about the implications of the choices you make, instead of it being a second-by-second -second string of micro-decisions. And don't be fooled by the first set of puzzles, because this mode's difficulty ranges from really easy to really go screw yourself. If nothing else, Columns GB is worth checking out solely for this mode. And finally, we enter the new millennium. Sega Ages 2500 was a series of low-budget remakes and compilations of Sega games, created for the PlayStation 2 and sold for 2500 yen. These include remakes of Phantasy Star 1 and 2, the first of which I've covered, so if you haven't watched that yet, maybe you could do that, I don't know. Anyway, Volume 7 was a remake of Columns, and it definitely looks like Columns. Because Sega Ages 2500 was a low-budget thing, it's fair to not expect much, but this really is mostly just the same as the classic versions, except made with pre-rendered sprites and random bits of 3D in the middle. Well, okay, so there's actually a second, fancier field that you can use. It's the one meant for the game's versus mode, but you can use it for regular columns too. It has spinning gems that drop down smoothly instead of tile by tile, and you have a brighter interface with a bar that shows how close you are to drawing a magic jewel. As for the versus mode itself, it's pretty much the same as the old two-player mode from the Mega Drive version. Unlike the Super Famicom version, there aren't any socks getting rocked, only an endurance match. The only notable difference is that there's a new power-up and the fact that there is actual dialogue and a plot. The gist of it is that a bunch of gems called the Columns have been stolen, and you control this hyperactive twat as she goes around making silly faces and challenging scarabs to video game matches in an attempt to find the Columns. Does this mean that the reason why the game is called Columns is because the gems are actually called Columns? Who knows? What I do know is that this remake does its job of giving you another alternative way of playing columns, but uh, I don't know. It's kind of blue at this point. It doesn't even have flash columns, it lacks customization options, and the music is brought down by the sound of cheap-ass instrumentation. Well, the remixed music at least. A lot of it is straight-up recycled from the arcade versions. The versus mode is okay, it plays fine, and the expressions that characters make are nice, but as a whole it doesn't really bring anything new to the table. But then again, it's not like we have a shortage of columns to enjoy. 
Seriously, I had no idea there were so many versions of columns, and I only barely touched on most of them. Of course, the majority of them share most of their gameplay mechanics in the arcade and original modes, but there you go. Ultimately, my personal recommendation would be the Super Famicom version. Plays great, looks great, and sounds great. Which is quite ironic. It does have a different feel to it compared to the arcade and Mega Drive versions though, so you might want to check those out too, if only to see how Sega's Columns got started. On the other hand, Columns 2 was only released in arcades and Sega Saturn until the very recent announcement of the Switch port, as part of the latest Sega Ages series of releases. While the first Columns isn't part of this series, this version does include the Mega Drive port's main mode as a playable, er, uh, mode. Columns still has some life in it, Sega. Maybe it's time for a proper revival. Just don't make it a Columns Battle Royale.